Back at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center, I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'm happy to welcome in via Skype Paul Johnson down in New York City with Nakusa Investments, adjunct professor at Columbia, just published a new book, Pitching the Perfect Investment, How to Win on Wall Street. Paul, thank you to the show. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate your Skyping in today. We had the chance to chat a little bit before getting you on. This book just came out. To rave reviews, it's already up on Amazon, about who might want to read this book and why. So let's start off with that, Paul. The target market is primarily people that are in uh, undergraduate or business school that want to pursue a professional career in Wall Street. It, or the young investment professional who either wants to brush up on what they had from business school or just add some more capabilities. And then there's a few sections, I think of them as little gems that for any practicing investor, whether they're a private investor or somebody who does it professionally, I think there's some parts of the book that they would enjoy very much. So talk with us a little bit. It's how to win at Wall Street. Are you kind of giving away the secret sauce for success here? Uh, how did you put on paper what that recipe is, again, for that pitching the perfect investment? Well, we started with the idea that there's no formal training on Wall Street. It's uh, baptism by fire. And I think that's unfortunate. There's some very talented people out there uh, trying very hard to do the right thing in terms of investing for clients or investing for themselves mm. and to reinvent the wheel. Everybody had to figure this out before, uh, again and again and again. And I thought that was a waste. I've uh, had the fortunate opportunity of spending the last 25 years as an adjunct professor at Columbia Business School. I was a professional investor for about a decade, uh, private investors since then, and I felt that it, it just, it, it, I would like to share that knowledge, the, what we've kind of learned in the classroom with a wider audience. And so my co-author and I, uh, he's a former student of mine, we've been collaborating for a couple of years, we've been writing the book for a long time, and we, it, anybody who buys the book, they'll look through the book, they'll see a couple things, number one, it's in color. There are very few investment books in color. There are 300, there are 320 images in the book. Um, some of them are corny. Um, some of them are insightful. And almost everybody that we've had feedback says it's an easy read. We explain things well. We explain sophisticated concepts in a simple terms. The charts and graphs and images help explain it. They reduce the burden of writing reading these dense texts about finance. My mom, who's not a finance professional, said she loves it. Uh, that might be because she's my mom. Uh, I took it as a, a very sophisticated review of the book. Um, and what we've seen that the, in the classroom is the students come back and say, there's nothing like this. No one's ever tried to explain finance in simple terms, but sophisticated terms. We're not dumbing it down. It's not, it's not pitching for dummies. It's a very sophisticated <laughs> Not pitching for dummies, but I've got to ask you, 320 images all in color, what are all these images, Paul? Well, we have, in, we have tables and charts where we try to explain numbers in a way that is very visual. Mm. We've got some really fun pictures. We've got pictures of the missing fifth beetle, Clarence Walker, which a lot of people didn't realize they had a fifth beetle. We have that. We have pictures of... Uh, people in suits and we have pictures of people not in suits and we try to explain the difference in a professional world. Uh, we've got uh, just all over the place, we've got some color uh, images that if you're colorblind you won't be able to understand as a right? So it just kind of goes on and on. My co-author is a very visual thinker and we started creating these charts just to explain concepts between the two of us and before we knew it we realized the, the charts were better than the writing. And so the charts are really an integral part of the book. And people really love it. They, for a finance book and a book which can be really dry and, oh my God, I can't get through it too, this is fun, I wanna keep reading. So is this gonna be required reading in one of Paul Johnson's classes at Columbia? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and other places. It looks like uh, NYU's gonna standardize on it. Fordham has already told us they're standing on standardizing Columbia is uh, in my classes now we're using it and it's running out to other professors. So I actually think this could become a classic book in business school across the country. We're really excited. Well, congratulations. It's you know a big feat to put out a book. And talk with us a little bit, Paul. You know, here we are 2017. You've been teaching at B-School for a while. You've been in the field for a while. You know, what's in this book? Would we have read this same book in 1995? 
Well, the world's changed a lot. Uh, and most importantly is that it's gotten very competitive. The, the stock market's more competitive than it was in 95. Uh, there is a much smaller margin of error today than ever before. There are professionals out there that are going to take advantage of any mistake you make. Mm -hmm. And I think the book really shows that. In 95, we, put, we would have written a different book. Uh, it was an easier job. It didn't seem easy at the time, but it was relatively easy, easier uh, job at the time. And so we really talk about how it's become much more sophisticated. And, and I think people have to be a bit more careful. Um, and we, I think we do a good job of explaining where the potential hazards are. And where are these hazards? Uh, you know, as, uh, I, I don't want you to, again, divulge the secret sauce, but what do you flag with folks? Well, the, I think the most important takeaway from that is that only people left in the in the stock market are professionals. Mm. The, the, the individual, and I put sophisticated private investors in that camp, but everybody else is gone. Uh, if you think of a poker analogy, which we do in part of the book, all the fish are gone. The only people left are the sharks. Everybody that shows up at the table is a professional. Mm. And so for individuals, uh, it's it shows them that they have to be careful, but it also gives them a bit of a guide when they're interviewing professional managers to say, hey, you know, I was reading this book, they talked about this, what is your edge? Walk me through it. And it's not complicated. We, we lay it out. And I think for some, you've got saved up some wealth and they're getting bombarded by money managers say, let me manage your money. I think it gives them some additional sophisticated questions to say, hey, you know, just take the book in and say, walk me through how you're going to help me work. And, and I like that aspect of it. Uh, it's a very empowering book. Uh, I'm an educator and I wanted to, people to be smarter when they're selecting investments, investment managers, when they're thinking about their own strategy. And I think this book, it will be fun to read and I think at the end of which people will be smart. Okay, you're going to be smarter by reading this book. Question, Paul, what's the next book? <laughs> you're like, don't ask, I just finished this one. I just finished. I, I write a book that I... In 1934, in the middle of the Depression, the three most important investment books ever written, certainly at the time, were published. And if you think about it, if you're a publisher, the last thing you're going to do in 1935 is, is publish a book on investing. It just came off the crash. We're in the middle of the Depression. And yet, three incredibly important investment books were written. And I'm writing the story on why those books were published. Oh, fantastic. What's the timeline in this? When are we going to have you back in the studio to be talking about this one, Paul? Now you're starting to sound like my publisher. <laughs> Where are we? Come on. Oh. How many pages oh. by the end of the week? <laughs> it's it's based on the street books. My book is called The Three Gods, the history, of the, the history of the Idea of Investing. The History of the Idea of Investing. Well, we'll look out for that one. But this one, again, Pitching the Perfect Investment, How to Succeed on Wall Street. You know, I saw the, I saw the, the title and thought, uh, how to... How to win friends and influence people? <laughs> Seems like yes, a... <laughs> it's the same in the investment world. <laughs> how to win, win friends, influence people, and succeed on Wall Street. How to make the perfect pitch. Paul Johnson, I appreciate you taking the time to Skype in. We will talk with you soon about these three gods and those 1930s Bibles. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Kate. Oh, it's great to talk to you. Okay, Paul Johnson, down in New York City, talking with us about investing on Wall Street. His new book, How to Pitch the Perfect Investment. How to Succeed on Wall Street.